what's up? This week marks the one year anniversary of me starting this channel. Porous sort of open cellulose type stuff. So this is kind of like the birthday party video for weeds and sardines. That's crazy, 71 videos later, 50,000 of you guys have hit subscribe. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm gonna get into my feelings about all of this more at the end of the videos, but today is about celebrating. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make what I would consider is the perfect birthday cake. Cause I can't think of a better way to show someone that you really care about them than to spend a few hours building them a beautiful sculpture of something to eat. To get started, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 162 degrees Celsius. And then I'm gonna grab my stand mixer and into the bowl of that, I'm gonna measure 180 grams of softened butter and 480 grams of sugar. Using the paddle attachment, I'm gonna mix these two together for about two minutes on low speed or until they're just combined. From there, the speed's gonna go up to medium high and now I'm gonna to cream together the butter and sugar for a solid five to seven minutes. Seven minutes later, when that's all looking nice and fluffed up, I'm gonna scrape down the sides and now I'm gonna load in eggs, six of those things to be exact. And I'm gonna do those one at a time on medium low speed. I'm gonna wait till each egg is incorporated into the mixture before I glug in the next one, and that looks good. Next, I'm gonna add in the wet stuff. For that, I've got 200 grams of cold buttermilk, and I'm gonna add 100 grams of vegetable oil and 12 grams of vanilla extract on top of that. Now, on medium high speed, I'm gonna slowly drizzle in this buttermilk mixture. Be careful, there's a lot of butter and oil going into this base, so we wanna slowly add it to make sure everything is getting properly emulsified. If your stuff is not looking emulsified, if it's kind of oily, it's no big deal. The flour is gonna bring everything together. Once this base is opaque and has a nice medium viscosity like this, now we're gonna move on to adding that flour. I'm gonna grab a fine mesh strainer to do that, and I'm gonna sift in 375 grams of all-purpose flour, 12 grams of baking powder, and six grams of salt. Give that a shake or a bump, or whatever it takes to get that flour moving through the sifter. And I wanna mention that I was not really sold on using sifted flour before I really got into this cake video. I thought that it added complexity, but it turns out that when you sift it, the flour hydrates a little bit more quickly and evenly and that really helps when you're adding so much dry stuff to quite a bit of wet stuff. Once we're sifted I'm gonna gently stir everything to combine here on low speed. This should take probably about 30 seconds or so and there we go cake batter. To make this into a proper b-day cake batter we need these guys sprinkles aka sprinks aka jimmies aka the gyms. 60 grams of them. We're gonna throw those in and now we're gonna use a rubber spatula to gently fold those in and stir everything up to combine. I a little bit of cream butter stuck to the bottom of this bowl, just make sure you don't. And yeah, we also have to taste this stuff. Oh, bro. Next, to bake these into a caked shape, I've got three eight inch cake pans and they have these neat removable bottoms that are pretty cool. Check it out, you can pop this thing right out of there Totally sick. So now we're gonna very liberally butter or pan spray the inside of these pans. Then I'm gonna scoop in my cake batter. I'm looking for about 575 to 600 grams of batter going into each pan. And as you can see, I've got my mixing bowl set up here and I've teared it out on my scale so that I can pretty much measure out exactly what I need. Next, I'm gonna smooth these out a little bit with my baby spatula. Then I'm gonna slap them on the table to level them out. And there we go. Now into a 325 degree oven to bake for 40 to 45 minutes and we will check back then. In the meantime, we need to make some frosting. For that, Saucepan. Into that, I'm gonna measure 400 grams of sugar, 60 grams of all-purpose flour, 300 grams of water, 300 grams of heavy cream, and I'm gonna whisk all that up to combine. Don't worry about a few lumps here, we're gonna cook those out in just a second. Over at the stove, we're gonna set this thing up over medium heat and stir it pretty frequently as I bring this up to a simmer over the course of about 10 minutes. Cooking the frosting might seem kind of weird, but it's actually pretty dope. This style is called ermine frosting, you might have heard of it, but it's an old-fashioned way of making frosting that's super light and full of flavor, and in my experience, it's pretty easy to frost a cake with and I need as much help in that department as I can get. This stuff is gonna thicken like pudding as it comes up to a simmer and from there we're gonna reduce the heat to low and simmer for about another two to three minutes to cook out any raw flour taste. Once that's looking gluey and the bubbles are nice and thick we're gonna throw this into the bowl of our stand mixer with the paddle attachment and mix on high speed to rapidly cool this off. We're gonna be adding butter in just a second and if we've got hot goo it's gonna ruin it all. Checking back on the cakes, it's been about 25 minutes and we're halfway through the bake. I'm gonna check in and give everything 180 degree rotation. And as a note, make sure to keep the cakes away from the sides of the oven here. Those tend to be significantly hotter and will give you a less fancy, more brown cake on the edge. Back to the frosting. After about five to six minutes of mixing to cool off this sugar glue, we're gonna check the temp. 80-ish degrees or 26 degrees Celsius is great. That's what we're looking for. Next, on low speed, I'm gonna mix in 10 grams of vanilla extract. Now, I've got four sticks of butter or about 460 grams total, and that's unsalted and softened. On medium low speed, I'm gonna work one chunk at a time, adding this butter in to get it all stirred up to combine. Next, I'm gonna pop this on medium speed and keep adding in the butter. And that's gonna get smeared into our cooked flour base. And after about a minute, we're gonna have pretty cool looking tasty butter pudding. 
Now to make this pudding into frosting, we're gonna roll this thing onto high speed and whip in a bunch of air for about two to three minutes. I always kind of find it unsettling to make frosting from scratch. It's basically sweetened whipped butter and there's not much else in there. We're gonna be eating this by the spoonful as well and just uh, whatever, don't think about it. Okay, once a bunch of air is whipped into this ermine style frosting, we're gonna give it a taste. Tastes good, set it aside. Now we're gonna check on the cakes. It's been about 45 minutes and to check for doneness, we're gonna get our cake tester out and give them a poke. If it comes out clean like this, they're done. The next move here, and most of the moves in this video I got from my pastry chef friend, Sarah Osborne. Check out her gourmet doggy treat company, Jack Snacks, link in description. Sarah says to wrap your cake pans with plastic wrap and then throw them right in the freezer. You wanna make sure to leave an edge vented just like this so that there's no reverse pressure suction going on in there. And yeah, throw them right in the freezer. And this move is probably controversial, but I'm convinced now that it helps the cakes stay moist by trapping in the steam that they let off, but it also lets them cool faster so they stop cooking and thus won't be dry, like at all. Faster cooling also means we can frost them sooner. And after about one hour in the freezer, these cakes are really well chilled. They've stopped cooking and now it's time to frost them up. From this point on, you're gonna see what a non-expert I am on cakes, but I did watch a bunch of videos on it and I think that I've got a pretty good end product and process here, but like bread or pizza, to get really good at this stuff, you just need repetition. I will link to a few videos that I found particularly helpful in the description for cake construction and frosting. Thanks Cupcake Gemma. Now, with a flat spatula, we're gonna loosen this cake and then pop it out of its round pan mold. There we go. Next, I'm gonna flip it over and pop off the bottom cake plate that was in there. I recommend parchment paper if you guys do not have these bottomless cake pans. Beware, these cakes can stick. Once all three cakes are popped out, we're gonna do the totally optional step of cleaning up the edges. For that, I've got a seven and a half inch round of cardboard that I've wrapped with plastic wrap. Seven and a half inches is just a little bit smaller than the round of the cake pans that we use, so it's gonna help me remove the slanty browned outside and it's gonna give us a much more beautiful cake. Using a paring knife, I'm gonna zip around the outside using the cardboard as my guide. And there we go. Again, this is a totally optional step. It just helps me avoid some of those giant voids on the side where there's just pure frosting on the edge of each cake. Once we got all three of these cakes trimmed up, it's time to frost them. In a pastry shop, they would use big pointy piping bags like these ones, and they're great. But you probably don't have them, I imagine, so we're gonna use freezer bags. I'm gonna load this into a core container and fold over the back sides to help me load this frosting into the bag a little bit more cleanly. Now to build this cake, I bought this cool rotating cake building platform. 10 bucks, link in the description if you're curious. But a Lazy Susan can also work if you've got one of those. I've also got one of the eight inch bottoms for my cake pans to act as a base, but anything round and flat will work. I'm gonna dollop some of the frosting on the tray to get the metal round to stick. Then I'm gonna dot the metal round to get the cake to stick to that. And on goes the first round of cake. On top of that, we're gonna pipe out some frosting as filling. We're going for about a quarter to a half inch layer here. You should have plenty of frosting made, so go big if you like that kind of thing. And once that's piped, we're gonna use our flat spatula here to evenly spread this from edge to edge. The move seems to be just using your hand to act as a steady focus point and then rotating the cake base under that to smooth things out. On goes layer two, that looks pretty even. <laughs> Same deal. We're gonna squeeze out some of the frosting to create a quarter to a half inch layer of frosting. Then we're gonna spread that out as evenly and cleanly as we can. And don't sweat perfectionism here, you guys. Frosting cake is very hard. It takes a lot of practice and I'm not gonna lie, I am not super good at it. Next goes on the top layer. We're gonna try and adjust that to get that as evenly on there as we can. And now we're gonna do what's called a crumb coat, which is basically just a thin base layer of frosting to seal in all of the tender cake crumbs so that when we go to do the final frosting, we don't accidentally tear up the outside of the cake. Despite making three of these cakes this week, I still have a very long way to go with my technique on frosting, but if I could offer some advice, I'd say work with the spatula away from you on the opposite side of the cake and try and keep that spatula vertical. Also, these white dough cards that I use for my bread videos are also super valuable in keeping things even. And that's not too bad. This looks pretty decent. The crumbs are indeed coated with frosting. So now I'm gonna throw this into the fridge and let this frosting set up for about 30 minutes. After that 30 minutes, the frosting is nicely set up and the crumb coat is complete. So now, we're gonna move into the final frosting step. From here, it's basically like elementary school art class. We're just putting dollops of stuff on there to see what sticks. We're gonna try and smooth that out and move it around and eventually we have something that works or at the very least, your mom's gonna think it's good. Again, trying to keep the work on the opposite side of the cake from you and using that vertical cake scraper technique really smooths things out, and I think that's the best way to play. And after about 10 minutes of messing around with this frosting, come on, for a dude who's not a pastry chef, this is not too shabby, but it's not done. Next comes the birthdayification of the outside of this cake. For that, we're gonna liberally coat every single side and the top with as many sprinkles as this cake will hold. I have it set up over this large bowl, as you can see, so that all those extra sprinkles 
fall down into the bowl and can be easily reused. I learned the hard way earlier in the week making practice cakes that sprinkles unless contained will go absolutely everywhere and you will crush them underfoot nearly constantly and you'll be pretty bummed out. Once this cake is super well coated with sprinkles, just take a second, drink it in. We just made an incredibly beautiful looking sculpture of a dessert. It's tall and well sprinkled and it's full of tender, rich, eggy confetti cake. I really can't think of a better way to celebrate someone's birthday and whoever you end up making it for, they're really gonna know how much you care about them. Let's eat this thing. This cake tastes very, very good. The acidity from the buttermilk really balances out all that pure sweetness. The sprinkles are great. They're super nostalgic. They bring some crunch and it's just very vanilla-y and moist. It's a moist cake. I love it. And I want to take a second to just thank everybody who's come to this channel over the past year. Thank you for showing up for all these videos. Thank you for leaving nice things down in the comments or even rude things. Thank you for doing it. It really helps us with the algorithm. I appreciate it either way. Here's to the next chapter of Weeds and Sardines, guys. Here's to year two. As always, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Be careful, dude.